Okay, the next signal property we're going to look at is simply defined and piecewise defined signals. This is a pretty easy one, but it is important kind of a definition and a vocabulary that we need to be familiar with. So on the top here, let's talk about simply defined signals. And on the bottom, we'll talk about piecewise defined signals. So first, simply defined. We say that a discrete time signal x of k is simply defined if it can be written as a single equation for all time. So as an example, x of k equals cosine 2 pi 10k plus 0.1. This is a single equation right here for x of k that holds for all time k. So no matter what value for k I give you, you plug it into this single equation right here. Similarly, x of k equals e to the minus k. That's an equation that holds for all time. So no matter what value of k you're given, you plug it into this one single equation. So if the signal can be written down as a single equation that is true for all time, we call that a simply defined signal. Piecewise defined is just a little bit different. This has an equation that is described on different intervals. So we always use this bracket notation right here. And it's a piecewise defined signal here in this example because I have equations that are valid over different time intervals. For instance, x of k is equal to k, so that's the equation that it's equal to, for all k greater than or equal to zero. So if I give you a value for k and it's positive, this is the equation you need to use. Whereas x of k is equal to negative k, a completely different equation for times less than zero. So if I gave you a negative value for k, this was the equation that you should plug that into. So when we have piecewise defined signals, they're pretty easy to identify because there's this bracket notation, and then there's, there's always this kind of stack of equations, and each one of those equations holds for some different time interval. In the equation right here, I gave you a piecewise defined signal that had two time intervals. There are two time intervals corresponding to two different equations. I could have just as easily had given you a signal x of k with three time intervals, or four time intervals, or five time intervals. In those cases, you would just have a bigger bracket and a larger stack of equations and a larger stack of intervals. Those intervals should define the whole time interval. So here we have k greater than or equal to zero, k less than zero. That covers all time k. So it's going to be important that these intervals cover the entire discrete time axis um, but the number of intervals you have completely depends on the signal that you're working with. So anyway, dis discer discerning or deciding if a signal is simply defined or piecewise defined is very easy. If it's a single equation, it's simply defined. If you see these brackets and there's multiple intervals with multiple equations corresponding to those intervals, then it's a piecewise defined signal. Things can get a little tricky sometimes. We might want to argue about things a little bit. For instance, what about the signal x of k equals u of k? Remember, this is our unit step function. The unit step is 0 for all time less than 0, and it is equal to 1 for all time 0 and greater. So here's what the unit step looks like. And as written, hey, x of k equals u of k. I would say this is a simply defined signal. There's a single equation right here, x of k equals u of k, that is true for all time. So based on our definition, we would call this a simply defined signal. However, kind of buried in the notation is the fact that u of, decay, u of k is defined like this. It is equal to 0 for k less than 0, and it's equal to 1 for k greater than or equal to 0. So u of k, as written, is actually a piecewise defined signal. So that goes back to kind of the argument. You know, as written, just looking at that, I say it's simply defined, but really kind of hidden in the notation is the fact that u of k itself is a piecewise defined signal. So we could argue about this a little bit. I think calling x of k a simply defined signal is the right way to do it. If I write something down like this, this is obviously a piecewise defined signal. Um, so yeah, save, save the definition of, if you see a bracket, call it, piecewise defined. If you see just a single equation, call it simply defined. But we could argue a little bit about when there's kind of this hidden notation buried behind the scenes. All right, so that's the end of this video. We've talked about simply defined signals and piecewise defined signals. We'll move on to the next signal property in our next video.